And then we have Chanit Kaur, Ch Kaur from India. And she used to, uh, she used to live in, the, in a little village. Then she went to... Uh, um, huh? yeah. Yeah. Do you have, your, you have your phone or do you have your microphone? Yeah, grab a microphone and here's your thing. And then she went to, um, what city did you then go to? Uh, after Bombay, yeah, so like 15, I think it's more people than in the Netherlands together. You know, she got from a small village to a huge city. And then she thought, I want a place of change. And she came to Amsterdam. And, uh, and basically she's in commodities trading. So it's really had a fantastic, fantastic talk. I mean, you're really cultural flexi uh, flexibility because you also work, uh, you know, with the Americans. And it's really interesting what you've done with your commodities. So now we've done now the trillions and uh, the commodities market, is of course, is much bigger. So we're going to talk uh, how that market is being influenced. So um, Jamit Kaur, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, my name is Janmeet Kaur, and I'm an innovation manager in trade and commodity finance, ABN AMRO. Why I'm speaking of Comgo, Comgo is really um, uh, close to at least ABN AMRO for sure. We thought of Comgo when it was just an idea. We materialized it on the paper, built the business model, the revenue model, the operating model of how Comgo would look like. And today, it is a company with 15 shareholders. So I'm super proud to have been working on Comgo for um, one year altogether of my career. So that, was, that is why I'm here on Comgo. The CEO of Comgo couldn't make it, but she was super happy that I present. So on behalf of Comgo, here I go. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll be available. Um, I, you know, um, Alosha touched a lot upon and Etin as well on why we need it in trade commodity finance. Just to give a little more flavor, typically a commodity sea cargo, you know, requires 36 original documents and 240 copies spread over 27 intermediaries. That's the scale of one cargo moving from one place to another. And more importantly, 95% of the data actually has no value because it's repeated. Now, why we use blockchain here is each party in a trade transaction is dependent on the action of the party before. The bill of lading is issued by a logistics party. Only then the trader can actually ask for the money under an LC to a bank. So the real time, action dependent, intermediary dependent, transaction is what calls for blockchain. And really put it in simple sense, you really need to know who issued you know, the documents, when, and under what terms and conditions. And the more it takes time for these documents to be released, produced, circulated, you can imagine the more capital is trapped in these papers. So today, if the bank receives the documents, you know, all of these 240 copies spread across somewhere, and we receive a bunch of paper, you know, a courier from DHL. It takes us 10 days to check it, because there can be mistakes, have to be repeated, have to be reissued. That's what blockchain takes away. Because it's real time, and it also brings a consensus towards all the parties, which document was produced at what time with what data. And you do not have to rekey the data. That was the biggest thing what we noticed. Now, the journey of Comgo actually started with Easy Trading Connect. You know, if you might have heard, we started off with ING and Societe Generale. Easy Trading Connect 1 and 2, based on oil and agri, is also what led towards formation of Comgo. When we said experiments are done, proven, we know the technology works for us, we know that in commodity trade it, is, it can be applied, that's why we want to move forward now to production. So, um, after the, you know, all of this, the trade has still not evolved because of the globalization or technology available, it has still not evolved. And the reason is, there is technology, but the technologies never brought the silos together. They never made the story complete from point A to point B. They never were able to prove, you know, through clear auditability and transparency that the cargo indeed and the documents along with it, the ownership along with it actually moved. So blockchain, through its consensus, through the immutability, auditability, and provenance, 
is actually why it is being applied a lot in commodity trade. And I would really like to mention the commodity trade uh, setup, you know, is far, far complex um, than, if I may say, than, uh, you know, plain vanilla trade. It would really require different structures. The risk is far more in commodities. And that is why, you know, we thought of experiment and then moving into production. Let's go further. So what did we do? All the transactions that can happen on any of the trading platforms need to be financed. And you need to have a system in place or a network, an ecosystem in place that can finance the trades irrespective of the platform where it is conducted. Now, that is the starting point, why the 15 of the world's largest institutions, as you can see the names, uh, ABN AMRO, ING, Netixis, BNP, all of them have actually invested into a venture which is now known as Comgo, and it was incorporated in 20, on uh, 21st of August. It is live for December 2018, as you might have heard. The first LC transaction was financed by Comgo for VACT. Now, I do want to mention that um, having a blockchain platform doesn't mean the end, you know, you've, you've achieved everything. It takes a lot of hard work to bring the ecosystem together. And if you look here, the banks, the inspection companies, the oil majors, it's a real diverse mix of parties, and it has a meaning. The reason is, for financing, you need all these parties, you know, that actually, again, complete the story and can validate, yes, indeed, it happened. And we did want you to take it to a level of the shareholders as well, so that the Comgo's roadmap is not only driven through technology or through you know, the traders only or the bankers only, but it's a mix so that the right roadmap for the industry could come out. So that was the motivation. Um, what is Comgo? I think this diagram describes it very well. Comgo is strategically placed in between, where you have producers on one side and consumers on the other side. Now, producers of liquidity on one side and consumers of liquidity on one side. And the connected platforms, one of them is VACT. You can imagine that Comgo can also finance transactions of agri platforms if they come in future. The metals platform or the shipping platforms. So um, that's where Comgo is. Today, it is very well seamlessly connected to VACT. In the future, we do foresee that it will be connected to all other platforms. Um, and we really uh, you know, believe in increasing the e ecosystem's efficiency and security. That's really important because for a trader, it is very important that the nuances of his trade remains with him. And that is why Quorum was chosen so that the parties, by design, only have data of each other and not of everybody else. Um, and all, uh, you know, all throughout the network, the security is also super important. And, you know, what better than having a cryptographic security there? Like I said, helps in unlocking the trapped working capital. That's really important. Uh, a ship waiting outside a port can cost around $20,000. You know, this is a real low margin industry. A high volume, low margin industry. If a trader loses $20,000, you can imagine he's making no profit. And it is just because a document didn't reach in time. It is just because the data issued by inspection company was wrong. It is just because there was a validator who didn't validate on time. That's how important data documents are for commodity trade. And this network operates for everybody. And that's how you know, it enables and catalyzes the commodity trade. That's the mission statement, by the way, catalyzing commodity trade in the world of Comgo. Um, what do we want to achieve here? Fully decentralized, and as a reference point for the industry, interoperable, we are, with VACT, streamlined digital experience, and one-stop shop for all the trade commodity finance products for the industry. Roadmap, 1.0, paper, paper LCs, fully paper LCs. I think we are somewhere at trade finance 2.0 today with SWIFT. 3.0 is where we want to be. Fully decentralized, privacy by design, efficiency, security, immutable data. And most importantly, controlling your data so that you know who you are sharing with on a need-to-know basis. 
That's all I had. Okay, thank you very much. On time. Now, okay, you said I worked for a year on this uh, on this company. Forming I mean, the company, yes. Uh, forming. I mean, one of the questions we have here is, uh, how do you make decisions? How do you make decisions with so many parties? I mean, it was a huge amount of slides. I mean, this banks and the shells and this. How do you can you move? fast enough. I mean, I know that documents go very slowly, you know, nowadays, so that it's, it's maybe better. But, but how do you make, as, a as an alliance, yeah. how do you make decisions? Um, I think, you know, it's not easy. And I know it's time consuming, it's energy consuming. But at the end of the day, you need to bring the industry together. Because if you are creating on your own, then you're again creating a silo. And mm -hmm. in a decentralized world, you need to have reasons why everybody else should join you. And not that you have you are the reason you know because you have yeah, a wonderful software. Yeah, but it's trust. Software. But I mean, if you would have a if you would be a, com a separate company and uh, you would do a brilliant job with, uh, with if you could move much quicker, have much more technology. But you say because everybody needs to join in, you would move slower. Not really. I would say the decision making at the shareholder board is very critical. That's yeah. how we invest a lot in the shareholders. You know, make them prep them bring them on board on workshops and everything, and that is how the decisions are made. Okay. And because it is for the industry itself, you know, yeah. and it's a mix for everybody, so it's not that, you know, it's only for the banks, so the banks would take care, you know, and it's driven only by the banks, but only by the trader, or it has only, uh, you know, functionalities for the trader. No, it's for everybody, and okay. that's how we together come. Yeah, so this, after, this afternoon we're going to talk about how to make these alliances and how Work. to do this governance, so there's a bunch yeah. of parties which are really... Okay, um, we have here an interesting name, the real Satoshi, Greg Wright. Thank you very much. He's in the audience, so <laughs> let's see. Who has a green, uh, who has a green screen now? So uh, can see, does anybody see a green screen from somebody? <laughs> then we can basically see if that's the real Satoshi. Okay, do you work on creating open protocols or do you use existing? What's the technology uh, you're working We're using on? existing protocols, Quorum again. Okay, Quorum. Gosh, these guys are really everywhere. You huh? know, um, uh, I would like to mention, Did again, going back a bit to the question that you asked before, how do you create alliances and how do you make them work? Yeah. Uh, the exercise that we carried out with VACT, we carried out as banks together with the company VACT. Yeah. At that point in time, it was not really VACT. And that's where our DLT lab actually contributed a lot in deciding which uh, technology are we okay, going so to use. So you worked together with VACT? Uh, we worked extremely well together with VACT. So I can tell you, uh, at time of when VACT was being formed, there were 52 companies that were evaluated for tech bases, out of which five were selected. And those five were then further evaluated by Comgo to provide... Um, you know, the tech support. So okay, yeah. all right. And uh, what's the business model? I mean, how, does, uh, how do you charge for your services? Uh, there's a license fee uh, as of now, and there's a also a, um, how do you say, the discounting available for uh, the early adopters. So mm -hmm. early adopters are But out anybody can now join, or is there a committee you have which... To, yeah, you have to pay a license fee to join, and then yeah. it is per transaction also. Okay. Fascinating. I mean, when are you going to go? I mean, you did, you've done your first couple of uh, uh, finances. How much money have you financed now so far in this uh, I business? I can't really say that. So how because, much is it? Uh, I can. <laughs> Come I on. Think that's it's just me and you and, and the live stream and a couple of people. Yeah, exactly. No. You know. Okay. But I mean, yeah, yeah. When, when will you reach the hundreds of millions of dollars? Because this is a big business. I mean, huge. We're close to hundreds, I would say. Huh? Close to hundreds. Close to hundreds. Okay. Yeah. Hundreds, because hundreds, and to hundreds. To give okay. you a hint and yeah. a guessing there, yeah. uh, the cargo of uh, oil is yeah. 60,000 tons. Yeah. The, the BFOE that we were talking about, not C. 60,000 tons yeah. multiplied by the barrel rate, 50, multiplied by the yeah. margins, yeah. and that being financed by Congo. Okay. Yeah, so this is also a hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> woman. So give her a big hand. She did a great job. Thank you very much. <laughs>